Okay, you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to write an if formula with multiple conditions. So in this scenario, we want to return very good if the salesperson has met the sales target, good if they haven't met the sales target, but they're average or above average, and then bad if the sales value is below average. So let's start with a nested if. So my first test would be, is this sales value greater than or equal to the sales target, which I'd need to lock because I'm copying this formula down. Now I locked that cell reference by using the F4 key at the top of the keyboard. If F4 doesn't work for you, just type the dollars in as you see them there. So my value of true would be very good. Now, if it's not very good, it's good or bad. And that will require another if. So I'm nesting this if within the first if. And my logical test would be, is the sales value greater than or equal to the average of the sales values? And I'd need to lock that cell reference as well. And my value of true would be good. Now, if it's not very good or good, then it's going to be bad. So my value of false within this nested if is bad. Then I'd need two close brackets at the end of the formula, one to close the nested if and the other to close the first if. And if I copy that down, you'll see I get the correct values for each of these sales values. Now it's important that you work out the order of your tests. The tests are run left to right. So if the first test is met, then the formula will stop here. If that test isn't met, it will run this nested logical test. If that is met, it will stop here. And if neither of the tests are met, it will return the value of false here. So sometimes you have to think about the order of your tests. Now we could also do this with the ifs function, and this won't require any nesting. So my first test would be, is the sales value greater than or equal to the sales target? And then the next argument is value of true one. So what do I want to return if this first test is met? Very good. Comma. The next argument is logical test two. And that test would be, is the sales value greater than or equal to the average? And the value of true two is going to be good. Then the final test would be, is the sales value less than the average? And if true, we want to return bad. So again, the tests are run left to right, but we don't require any nesting. If I copy this down, you see I get the same results. Now let's take another example where I'm going to use ifs equals ifs. Now what we want here is the blues to become purple, the reds to become green, but all other colors to stay the same. So I'm going to say, is this color equal to blue? If true, return purple. Logical test two, is this color equal to red? If true, return green. Now, if it's not blue or red, we want to return the original color, yellow, brown, or pink. Now, I could write an individual test, one for yellow, and say, if it's yellow, keep it as yellow, but then I'd have to do that for each of the other colors, which would give me a lot of tests. So what I can do instead, and I can only do this in the final test I'm using, is type in true. So that would be the final logical test. And then your value, if true for that test, would be what you would want to return if none of the other tests are met. So I'd want to return the original color. So I can close the bracket there and then copy that down. And you can see I keep the original color for brown, yellow, and pink, but blue has become purple and red has become green. Now this final example, we're gonna think about whether an if is in fact the best solution. Is there a better solution that we can use? Let's first of all, just look at how to use the if. So we want to return a discount based on the quantity purchase. So if the quantity purchase value is 15 or above, we give an 8% discount. 
Between 10 and 14, we give a 5% discount, but low 10, no discount. So we'll say equals if, is this value greater than or equal to this quantity here, the 15? If true, we want to give an 8% discount, comma. If, is this value greater than or equal to this 10 threshold, quantity of 10? And I need to lock that. If true, I want to give a 5% discount. Otherwise, I don't want to give any discount at all. So that's zero for that final value of false argument. Close the bracket twice for nested ifs. And then I can copy this down and I can apply the percentage format. So that works fine, but say I had many thresholds. Let's say I had 20 gave me 10% discount. And then maybe 25 gave me a 15% discount. Now I'll apply some formatting here, just to tidy it up. Now I'll change one of these values, say this to 26. So I'd want 26 to give me a 15% discount. Now I could do a many nested level if statement, but there is in fact a better way. Let me just insert another column. Now to use this better way, we would need an additional row with zero and zero percent. Now this method is going to use the VLOOKUP function. My lookup value would be the quantity purchased and the table array would be this table over here, which I need to lock. The call index number is two because I want to return values from the second column. And my range lookup can either be an approximate match or an exact match. Now in this example, I'm doing an approximate match. So that would be true. But VLOOKUP assumes that you will be using true in that argument. So you can actually get away with not using that argument. Now let me just explain how an approximate match lookup works it will see these values as ranges of values. This first range here is 0 to 9, then we have 10 to 14, then 15 to 19, and then 20 to 24. You must have these values in the first column of your table array in ascending order to express the ranges correctly. But if I press enter and then copy this down, you'll see it gives me the correct results. So for example here, with a quantity purchase of 20, I now get a 10% discount. For 26, I'm getting a 15% discount. So that is a much more efficient way of performing this calculation than using a nested if with many nested levels. Now the total to pay, if you're interested in that, would be the unit price times the quantity times, open bracket, one minus the 8%. So if you're giving an 8% discount, you need to calculate 92% of the total. One is the same as 100%. 100% minus 8% gives you the 92%. So if I copy this down, I get my total to pay values. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.